In this video, we're going to talk about how decimals are stored in a computer. There are two ways we essentially can store a decimal inside of a computer because remember, it stores zeros and ones. So number one, we can pretend like a decimal point is a certain distance away so that we have some number of bits to the left of the decimal, some number of bits to the right of the decimal. That's called fixed point notation. Otherwise, we can do something like floating point notation in which we move the decimal to the left or move the decimal to the right. So floating point notation is the exact same thing as scientific notation. In scientific notation, what we do is we have some sort of number times the base raised to some sort of power. So let me bring up the whiteboard and let's take a look at something like one decimal two three times 10 squared. So in this case, we know we can just multiply this directly and we get the same result. However, this is sort of human reading here and what's going on. So this is a base 10 number and it tells us to move the decimal place to the right because it's positive. Remember, positive goes to the right and negative goes to the left, okay? So it's just telling me move the decimal place two places to the right. So we go one, two. So that number is 123. So because we can manipulate this exponent to move the decimal to the left or to the right, we call this floating point. And so this is how a computer decides, eh, this is how I'm going to store a number. So let's take a look at a base two number. So one decimal zero, zero, one, or something like that. So we know if there's no decimal, that's the value nine. So let's do two to the third. So this is our base, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to move the decimal point to the right three places. One, two, three. And that will give us the value nine. And so just like multiplying anything by 10 raised to some exponent a or something like that, that tells us the number of places to move the decimal place. If it's negative, we move it to the left. And so there's no difference here. Since we have a base two number, as long as we multiply it by two, we move the decimal place to the left or to the right. So it's just like the shift operator. Remember, if we did a shift x number places that's the same thing as a times 2 to the x so hopefully this looks very familiar because it's in the same style of the scientific notation and so that's what we're doing x is the number of places that we want to move the decimal so to store this we actually need to have some pieces of information that the computer can store so there's actually three pieces of information a sign an exponent and a fraction so let's determine what these three pieces of information really are. So if I do something like 1 decimal 110 times 2 squared, where do we get these pieces of information? Well, this, everything to the right of the decimal, is called the fraction. This is the sign, so in this case it's positive, and this is the exponent. Okay, so where does the rest of the information get or come from? So by the standard, well, this is the, the standard is called IEEE 754. And that's essentially telling us how this is put together so that everyone uses the same standard so we can all understand each other. So in the standard, there's an implied one decimal in front of the fraction. So it's one decimal fraction. Okay, so that is how we're storing the information. So we actually don't have to store this portion, the quote unquote whole portion of the number because it's implied. Another thing is our base is implied. We know it's gonna be times two to some power. So really we only have to store this portion, this portion, and this portion right here. Now there are a little bit of uh, weird things that have to go on. The exponent is not exactly squared here. You'll see that we bias the exponent so that we can have negative exponents. So let's take a look at the lecture. Once again, this is scientific notation. So we're going to look at, in C++, we have float and we have double. Float is a floating point number, whereas double is a floating point number, just double the precision, we just double the size of it. So taking a look at your screen, you can see that we have those three components, and it's just basically which bits feed to what? It's still a 32-bit number, but now what we're doing is we're breaking up that 32-bit number into three components. So if you look at this graphic, you can see, let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go. You can see the sign comes first, and that's only one bit. If it's a zero, it's positive. If it's a one, it's negative. No twos complement, no nothing like that. Then our exponent comes next. It's an 8-bit exponent. Then finally, we have a 23-bit fraction. If we add 23 plus 8 plus 1, we get 32 total bits. And so this, remember, is how we store the information. So let's take a look at an example. Bring up the whiteboard here. So in this example, what I'm going to do is show you how we actually come up with these different types of numbers. 
So I'm going to choose 2.5. So 2.5 uh, is going to be, well, that's not going to work because it needs to be, okay, I'll just do this. So we'll talk about how we do floating point arithmetic later, but 2.5 is 10.1 in base 2, okay? We can't really do this in base 10 because floating point is in base 2, okay? So right now, the way I have it, is this is times two to the zero, right? Because the decimal point does not need to be moved left or to right. This is gonna be the value 2.1, I'm sorry, 2.5. So remember this is two to the first plus two to the negative first. If you remember two to the first is the value two, to the negative first is one over two. So that gives us 2.5, okay? That's where this number is coming from. So now let's take a look at how we're going to store this in IEEE. 754. Now there are two, uh, there's two different ways we can do IEEE 754. There's a 32-bit and a 64-bit. Right now we're doing the 32-bit version, okay? So this is the number that I want to store in this format so that the computer can understand it. So what I have to do is I have to first normalize it. If you remember, whenever we look at the number, it's going to be one decimal and then our fraction. However, notice we have one zero decimal. So if we just stored this fraction, the one, well, whenever we get the number back out, it's just going to be one decimal one. So essentially we lose the precision. So how can we actually move this decimal to make it one decimal zero one? Well, if you're thinking of it, we can do one decimal zero one times two to the first. Now, are these equivalent to each other? Well, two to the first means move the decimal to the right one place. So that'd be one zero decimal one. So there we go. Normalized notation just means it's one decimal something. Okay, so there we go. That is normalized notation. So that's step one. You always have to normalize it. That way there the exponent makes sense. Okay, now whenever we have this value, this is going to be our fractional portion right here. Remember, we have 23 bits to store the fraction. Now, to pad this out, remember, anytime we add a zero to the right of the decimal place, to whatever number happens to be other, it does not affect the magnitude. So 0 0.01 is the same thing as 0 0.01000000, okay? So we have 23 bits, but we need 21 additional zeros to pad this out to a 23 bit number. I'm not gonna do that yet, but you'll see what it means. So here's our exponent, here's our fraction. And what is our sign? Well, the sign is positive, so that's gonna be zero. So let's write this out. Okay, so our sign is going to be zero. Remember, that's the first thing to come in this 32-bit number. Our exponent, so I'm just gonna write the number of bits each one of these are. Okay, so the exponent is eight bits, and our exponent is going to be one. However, there is something called a bias in here. So this is an unsigned number, so if it's unsigned, that means we can't have negative numbers. And so what they do is they subtract 127. Unfortunately, you sort of have to remember that it's 127. However, uh, there's some some ways it's not that <laughs> it's not that difficult. So 127 is essentially going to be the bias. Now remember, whenever we turn the number from IEEE 754 into the actual number that we want, we subtract off the bias. If we're going the opposite direction, we want to add in the bias. So we add 127, that gives us the value 128. Now remember, all this has to be binary, so eventually I'll be converting 128 into binary. And then our fraction is going to be whatever's to the right of the decimal point in normalized notation. So that's 0, 1, and then 21 zeros over here. Okay, so 0, 1, and then 21 zeros that follow that. So remember, whenever I ask you for this in IEEE 74 format, you're going to give it to me in hex. So let's erase some of this so that we can see what's going on. So now we have all of our components. We've normalized it, we, got, we biased the exponent, and we checked the sign. Now remember, we have a one bit sign and that comes first. So I'm gonna write the zero right over here. That's our sign. Then comes an eight bit fraction. So let's take a look at 128. So 128 is actually a power of two. So there's the 128's place, the 64's place, the 32's place, the 16's place, the 8's place, the 4's place, the 2's place, and the 1's place. So there you go, it's an eight bit number and we're going to write that next. One, zero, zero, zero. 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and then rem remember we have our 23-bit fraction, which is 0, 1 followed by 21 zeros. So there's 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. How many you got? 
uh, and so on and so forth. So the rest of them are zero, so it's not gonna be that, that problem. Now, to convert this in hex, remember we take chunks of four numbers. However, this thing is just sort of sitting out here, the sign. So I'm gonna regroup these into groups of four. There we go, zero, zero, one, zero. 0, 0, 0, and the rest are 0 following that. Okay, so 0, 1, 0, 0 is 4. 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0. 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2, 0, and then the rest are zeros. Okay, so this is our IEEE 74. So this is how it's actually stored inside the computer. Now we write it in hex because you don't want to write out 32 ones and zeros like I did up there. So in hex, this is what number 2.5 is. So remember what one zero decimal one, that's times two to the zero. Our very first thing we have to do is normalize it. That means it has to be one decimal something. To do that, we move the decimal over to the left. We get one decimal zero one times two to the first. When we do that, we log the sign, which is positive, so it's zero. Then we log the exponent. So we take this number here and add in the bias which for a 32-bit float is 127. That gives us the value 128. And then finally, we take everything to the right of the decimal point, and that becomes our fraction. Remember, if you don't have enough bits in, inside of here, you just add zeros to the right of it. And so 4020000 is the value 2.5. So let's go back to our lecture and make sure we captured everything here. Okay, so I give you a different example here. I think it's good for you to have multiple examples to see what's going on. So I'm gonna leave that one for you, but the two decimal five, I'll leave up here. There's another one. All right, so let's take a look at 64-bit IEEE. Before we actually go the opposite direction, let's take a look at the 64-bit, because you'll notice it's almost identical. It's just that we have different groupings. Now, a double is double the size of a float, but we don't double every single field of the float. Notice that the exponent goes from 8 bits into 11 bits, and then our fraction goes from 23 bits into 52 bits. So we actually, whenever we doubled the size from float to double, we actually gave much more credence to the fraction than we did the exponent. However, with the exponent, remember, in a float, 32-bit float, the bias is 127. Now, with a 64-bit double, the bias is going to be 1023, 1023. So, the reason for that, so let's go ahead and do the exact same number. We'll do 2.5. That way there we get to see this yet again, how we did it. So, 2.5 is 1, 0, so that's the value 2. Decimal 1, because that's 2 to the negative first, right? And then, that's 2 to the 0. We're going to move the decimal place over by 1. That gives us 1, 0, 1 times 2 to the first. Then we'll, so that's normalized notation. Very first thing we have to do is normalize it. That way our exponent is correct. Then we take the exponent and we add on the bias, which is 127. 1 plus 127 gives us 128. So here's our fraction, here's our sign, here's our exponent. Okay, so this needs to go into binary, which is one followed by seven zeros. So our sign comes first, that's a zero. And everything else comes from there, okay? So hopefully you remember how to do that in 32-bit IEEE, okay? So let's take a look at what this is gonna look like in 64-bit. Well, all the steps are the same, except now instead of adding 127, we're gonna add 1023, which gives us 1024. If you recognize that, that's also a power of two. So let's go ahead and convert that into binary. So there's 1024's place, 512's place, 256's place, 128's place, 64's place, 32's place, 16's place, 8's place, 4's place, 2's place, 1's place. So is that 11? So 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 11 total bits. That's our exponent. Okay, so let's group these out. Sign is positive, so it's zero. Exponent. So remember, that's now an 11-bit. That's not a 1. There we go. So now that's an 11-bit exponent. That gives us 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then our fraction, remember, is now going to be 52 bits. And so that gives us 0, 1 followed by 50 zeros. Okay? So this one's a little bit harder just because there's so many numbers that we have to write in there. So once again, the sign comes first. That's a 0. Followed by the exponent, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, followed by the fraction, 0, 1, 0, 0, and then the rest zeros. Okay? Once again, we want to group these out into groups of four. So 0, 1, 0, 0, there's a group of four, 0, 0, 0, 0, there's a group of four, 0, 0, 0, 0, group of four, 
group of four, and then the rest are zeros. So let's take a look at what this is going to come out to be. So 0, 1, 0, 0 is the value 4. 0 is 0, 0. Uh, that's another 4. And then finally, zeros. Okay, so remember that would be a 32 bit. So when you actually need to double the size, and that right there is a 64 bit float. And so that's what this looks like. Uh, everything is the same whenever we look at a double. We just have a lot more numbers. So the exponent goes from 8 bits to 11, so don't forget that. And then the fraction goes from 23 bits to 52 bits. The sign is still the same, and it's still in the same location. In fact, the sign, the exponent, and the fraction is always in the same location. So remember our steps to get it into this format. Step one is we write it out in binary, and we multiply it by 2 to the 0th power, right? Because that's, if we didn't, if we took out the times two to the zero, it wouldn't change the number. Then what we do is we normalize it. So that's one decimal something. So we change the exponent. So we move the decimal right next to that one. And then what we, so that's called normalized notation. Then what we do is we take the sign, write that down first. If it's zero, it's positive. If it's one, it's negative. Then we take the exponent, whatever that numeric exponent is. For a double, we add 1023. For a float, we add 127. Then we convert that into binary. For a double, we have 11 bits that we need to convert it into. And then finally, we take whatever's to the right of the decimal, and that becomes our fraction. So let's take a look at this going the opposite direction. I'm just going to give you an example. I'll already come up with this. Okay, so I've got an example right here that I'm just going to put it in hex. Okay, since we have eight digits, we know this is a 32-bit number. So everything we're going to do here is based off of a 32-bit IEEE. So that's the very first step. We have to know what format we're in because whenever we decode this, we have to know what groupings of bits. Is it 8 bits? Is it 11? Is it 23 bits? Is it 52? So in this case, we know it's 32 bits. So step two, so step one, check size. Step two, convert to binary. Okay, so now what we want to do is convert this into binary. Well, four is 0, 1, 0, 0. 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1. 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0. E is 1, 1, 1, 0. And then the rest are 0. Okay, so there we go. Uh, 4, 8, so, okay, there we go. So in this case, what we're going to do is now we have to split up the fields. So step three, split fields. Okay, now we know that this is a 32-bit number, so the very first bit is going to be the sign. So this is our sign. The next eight bits is going to be our exponent. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and then the rest is going to be our fraction. Okay, so there we go. Now we have the sign, we have the exponent, and we have the fraction. So let's write those out. Sign is equal to zero, so it's positive. The exponent is 1000011. Okay, so if we look at this, we can move right to left. We know we've got a 1, we've got a 2. So there's our 4's place, the 8's place, the 16's place, the 32's place, the 64's place, and the 128's place. So we have 128 plus 2 plus 1. So we know we can already subtract. Well, okay, never mind. <laughs> so that's 131. And remember, we have to subtract off the bias. So 131 minus 127 gives us 4. Okay? And then finally, we have our fraction. Now, if you remember, in the fraction, we have an implied one decimal, and then whatever we see comes after that. So one decimal, then we have three zeros and three ones. Okay, and that is our full number. So let's write this out mathematically as it would look. One decimal, zero, 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 one, 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 times two to the fourth. Okay, so whenever we want to decode this, it's much easier if it's two to the zero because we can just look at the left of the decimal point, convert that into binary or into base ten, and then look to the right of the decimal and convert that into base ten, just like we always do because there's the two to the zero power, all that sort of stuff. So we know that this is a positive exponent, so we're going to move the decimal place to the right, four places: one, two, three, four. So when we're done, it's one zero 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 one decimal one one. Okay, now that's times two to the zero, so we can leave that off. Now what we do is we take the left-hand side of the decimal place and convert it into base 10. So there's the ones place, 
the two's place, the four's place, the eight's place, the 16's place. Okay, so that's 17. Now we have two to the negative one, which is one over two, and then we have two to the negative two, which is one over four. Well, hopefully that gives you, you know that's 0.75, so that's three quarters. Okay, so 17.75 is 418E0000. Now remember, the exact same thing happens with double, except instead of subtracting off 127, we're going to subtract off 1023. So the hard part to remember here is when do we add the bias and when do we subtract the bias? If we're going from the decimal number into the hexadecimal number, you add the bias. If we're going from the hexadecimal number like your screen shows you now into the decimal number, we subtract the bias. And that's really it. So we have to know that 32-bit, okay, 1-bit sign, 8-bit exponent, 23-bit fraction, bias is 127. So there's essentially four pieces of information we need to know. Really three because the sign's always one bit, okay? So memorize bias, how many bits the exponent is, and how many bits the fraction is. Is? Yes, is. So that is how IEEE 74 format works. In a later video in the floating point arithmetic, I'll actually show you how to use this so we can add, subtract, multiply, divide, that sort of stuff. So there you go. Welcome to IEEE 74. There's really no magic to this. It's just going to take some practice so that you get comfortable with it. But notice, I, just track your numbers, that sort of stuff. There is no magic to it. Thanks for watching.